Welcome everybody. In this video, I'll be talking to you about parenchymal lung disease and the ultrasound features of atelectasis and pneumonia. First, let's start by defining what consolidation looks like. When lungs lose air, they start becoming consolidated. And when lungs are consolidated, they look like liver. And so when you look at the image here, you can see very clearly that the lung is looking like the liver lying underneath the diaphragm. This is abnormal. This is consolidated lung, and this is what we call hepatized lung. It looks like liver. The differential diagnosis of hepatized lung includes pneumonia and atelectasis or lung collapse. And in the next few slides, we will differentiate between what pneumonia looks like on ultrasound and what atelectasis or lung collapse looks like on ultrasound. So first, let's try to differentiate between atelectasis and pneumonia. Atelectasis, as we know, is basically collapsed lung. And so when you look at a lung that is collapsed, the alveoli will have no air. They'll be completely collapsed. Uh, the lung volumes will be decreased. And the collapsed lung will likely be either due to a mucus plug or a large pleural effusion compressing, that, compressing the lung. On the other hand, when you look at a lung that has pneumonia, what you will see is that the alveoli become filled with inflammatory fluid. And with that, the lung volumes will be either normal or increased. And the cause of pneumonia is usually infectious. And so there's quite the distinction here between lung collapse, which is a small atelectatic lung, and pneumonia, which is an inflamed lung that is increased in size, or at least normal in size. So differentiating between atelectasis and pneumonia on ultrasound can be difficult. They will both look like consolidated lung. However, there are features that may help you distinguish between atelectasis and pneumonia. The first of these features is how the air bronchograms look. And what are air bronchograms? Basically, air in the bronchi on ultrasound will look like these white hyperechoic lines. And these on ultrasound we call air bronchograms. With atelectasis, if there's a mucus plug, there will be no air traveling down the bronchi. And therefore, there will be static air bronchograms. These hyperechoic lines will be static. They won't be moving. Or you will find no air bronchograms if there's complete resorption of the air within the airways, within the uh, bronchi and the alveoli. And so mucus plugging causes resorptive atelectasis. And the ultrasound feature of that is either static or no air bronchograms. On the other hand, if you have a very large or massive pleural effusion, that can compress the lungs and give you a compressive atelectasis. So there's two types of atelectasis here, a resorptive atelectasis, when you get resorption of all the air in the alveoli because of a mucus plug that's preventing uh, air going in and out of the lung. Or there's another type of atelectasis called compressive atelectasis. If you have a very large pleural effusion, that's actually compressing the lung. On the other hand, when you look at a patient with pneumonia, the bronchi are usually patent and the inflammation is usually in at the level of the alveoli. And so you will find that air is moving in and out of bronchi in a patient with pneumonia. Uh, and the consolidation is mostly at the level of the alveoli. And so when you see air bronchograms that are dynamic, that are moving up and down, this suggests likely a pneumonia, because there's no complete bronchial obstruction. So let's look at this uh, ultrasound image of the left lung base. Now, what you see here is air bronchograms that are dynamic. They're coming in and out. You see here that with each breath, they're coming in and out. This tells me that the bronchi are likely patent. This is more likely suggestive of a pneumonia. And we don't see a big pleural effusion. We just see a very small pleural effusion here. And so this is very likely pneumonia because we see dynamic air bronchograms. Here, on the other hand, we see 
a consolidated lung and we see a large pleural effusion. And within the consolidated lung, we do not see these dynamic error bronchograms. And so this is likely atelectasis because we don't see error bronchograms. Here on the other hand, this is an ultrasound of the right lung base. And what we see here is hyperechoic lines coming in and out of view. These are dynamic air bronchograms. So this image is very likely uh, a pneumonia, very suggestive of a pneumonia. So to summarize, a hepatized lung uh, that has dynamic air bron bronchograms is very suggestive of a pneumonia. A hepatized lung that has static or no air bronchograms makes atelectasis more likely. Look at this image here. What do you guys think? So think about this view here. Is this consolidated lung? This is actually a trick question because what we're looking at here and what gives this slide away is the kidney. The kidney is characterized by double density. You see here the cortex and the medulla. This double density is very characteristic of the kidney. And on top of the kidney here, we see the liver and we see the Morrison's pouch. We actually do not see diaphragm in this view at all. The diaphragm is likely up here somewhere. So we're actually not looking at lung at all. This is a trick question. What we're looking at here is kidney, liver, and Morrison's pouch. And when you cannot see the diaphragm, uh, this hyperechoic convex line, then you really need to readjust your probe to be able to visualize the diaphragm because here you're way low. You're much lower than where the diaphragm is. And the kidney is what gives this view away. You see the double density very clearly. So how good is ultrasound in assessing consolidation? Ultrasound is actually superior to X-ray in detecting consolidation. If you do a thorough ultrasound of all the lung regions and all the lung zones, ultrasound is 100% sensitive in detecting consolidation, whereas X-rays are only 38% sensitive in detecting consolidations. Interstitial syndrome, and by that I mean diffuse B-line patterns, uh, are also better detected with ultrasound, 94% sensitive, in comparison to chest x-rays, which are only 49% sensitive. When you're looking at a diffuse beeline pattern, for example, in somebody with pulmonary edema, ultrasound is a more superior test than x-ray. So what does pneumonia generally look like on ultrasound? We mentioned that you can see hepatized lung with dynamic air bronchograms. But early on in the course of the disease, pneumonia can look like just beelines. Uh, and that is early on in the disease process. It basically looks like beelines. There's fluid pockets that look like, uh, give you the comet tail or rocket artifact. And that is early on. And then as it progresses, the lung starts becoming, or sorry, yeah, the lung starts becoming consolidated. You start seeing translobar consolidation, which we call hepatized lung. As we mentioned, dynamic air bronchograms suggest a pneumonia. There's another sign that I want to introduce you to, and that is called the shred sign. And that is actually characteristic of a pneumonia. What is the shred sign? Well, the shred sign is basically when you see subplural consolidations with plural irregularities. The key word here is plural irregularities. When you look at the pleura, and the pleura is jagged and irregular, it's not clean and thin and smooth, when the pleura is irregular and jagged, uh, then that gives away the shred sign. And this is a sign that there is a subpleural consolidation or what we call a non-translober consolidation. When you look at effusions associated with pneumonia, pneumonias can be associated with small hypoechoic paranemonic effusions. These tend to be quite common. If you start seeing echogenic debris floating around within the fluid, within the pleural fluid, this is very suggestive of an empyema. Look at this view here. You see the diaphragm, you see a pleural effusion, and you see these hyperechoic 
speckles floating in pleural fluid. This is very suggestive of an empyema. All these floating debris are very suggestive of an empyema. So this is what I was describing as the shred sign. And Daniel Lichtenstein, the father of lung ultrasound, described this as non-translobar consolidation, or the shred sign is the other name for it. And what I'm seeing here is a pleural line that is irregular, very jagged. It's not a clean pleural line that we're used to seeing. This is a very irregular pleural line. This indicates that there's subpleural consolidation behind here. There's some fluid in the pleura. And this is what we call the shred sign or non-translober consolidation. I've just zoomed in on that pleura just to show you how that pleura looks very irregular. You see this? This is a pleural line that is very jagged, uh, very irregular. And so this is the shred sign. This ragged pleura indicates that there is subpleural consolidation or non-translober consolidation, characteristic of a pneumonia. This image shows us consolidated uh, lung, and it shows us beelines as well. You see these? These are beelines. These are comets, lung rockets. They're extending all the way down to the end of the screen. So we see a consolidated lung. We see beelines. And as the lung uh, moves down during inspiration, you see here that there are some hyperechoic lines coming into view. These are Dynamic air bronchograms, watch out for them. Here they come. Yep, they're right there. And then there's a small pleural effusion. So what we see here is a pneumonia. And in fact, we see a lot of manifestations of pneumonia in this image. We see early pneumonia in this area of the lung. We see late pneumonia in this area of the lung where we see consolidation. And we see a paranemonic effusion. So this is a pneumonia in evolution. All right, so look at this image here, a very clear image of a consolidated or hepatized lung, and you see white dynamic or hyperechoic dynamic air bronchograms. See them coming into view, there they go. So this is very suggestive of a pneumonia. And you see the spine in the far field, and so very classic. Look at this image here. So here we have our probe uh, placed on the right apex. We're up underneath the clavicle. So the probe is really high up. And what we see is fluid. All of this is a pleural effusion. This is actually a very big pleural effusion. It is peeling the lungs off the chest wall, even as high up as the right apex. This pleural effusion is extending as high up as the apex. This is a very large, a massive pleural effusion. And we can see it in the mid zones. We can see it in the apex. We can see it in the bases. We can see it everywhere. When you have such a large effusion and an underlying consolidated lung, this is very likely a compressive atelectasis. So this is very suggestive of, of atelectasis. We see some white hyper uh, echoic um, uh, uh, spots on the, uh, on the lung but they're not dynamic. We don't see dynamic uh, air bronchograms. These are static air bronchograms. So this is a compressive atelectasis. So let's summarize this lecture. Consolidated or hepatized lung uh, can be either atelectasis or pneumonia. If you look at the hepatized lung and it shows static uh, air bronchograms, they're not moving, or you don't see any air bronchograms at all, this suggests a mucus plug causing resorptive atelectasis. On the other hand, if you see a very large pleural effusion, a massive pleural effusion, this suggests a compressive atelectasis. When you see dynamic air bronchograms, 
This suggests that the bronchi and the airways are largely patent, but there's inflammation lower down and likely at the level of the alveoli. This suggests a pneumonia. Dynamic air bronchogram suggests a pneumonia. And then pneumonia can also feature early on B lines. You can see an irregular pleural line uh, called the shred sign. This indicates subpleural consolidations. You can see a small paranemonic effusion, or you can see empyema with floating echogenic debris within the pleural fluid. If you'd like to read more about the topic, I'd like to refer you to a chapter uh, that I contributed to uh, in Principles and Practice of Anesthesia for Thoracic Surgery. Um, and the chapter is, title is Pulmonary Ultrasound. And I would also like to refer you to westernsono.ca. Western Sono is the platform for, more, for Western University. Uh, under the supervision of Dr. Robert Arnfield. And there's a lot of useful videos there and resources if you'd like to read further about the topic. Thank you, and we'll move on to the next lecture.